You also make a life, Lord. You are the lion, Lord. Yet you are the lamb of God. Yahweh, we worship you. Hallelujah. Come and do what only you can do. You are my glory. You are my glory. Uh-huh. He must struggle at the mention of your name, O God. God of thunder. You are the God of thunder. God of it's fire. fire. God of fire. Come and do. Come and do, Lord. What only you can what only do. You mighty man of war. He's a mighty man of war. He's the lion of Judah. We bow down. We bow down, Lord. And we worship you, King of glory. Oh, yes. Yeah. can do again. Worship you, Lord. Hallelujah to your name, O oh God. We call upon you. It's another beautiful day, another beautiful week that just started. Today is Monday, Monday, the twelfth day in the month of December, and it's the first working day of the week. And we are grateful to the Lord for His kindness. For his mercies, he has woken us up, he has renewed our strength, and here we are, carrying forth the work. I don't know where you are, I don't know what you do, anywhere you are hearing us. I want you to give God praise that I've given you life. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for what he has in store. You know what he said? I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Yes, thoughts of good, not of evil, 
to give you an expected end. It is my desire that you recognize that he that gave you life have things in store for you. And he said, my purpose is just stand and I will do all my pleasure. We give him all the praise. We give him all the glory for yet another day and another week. We are so blessed. We've rested over the weekend, even though there were other demands in name. That is what life is all about. And we want to give God praise for his mercy. I know the Lord has been so good to you. I know, I know, I know because he is good all the time. And sometimes what God is working out looks as if it's not good. But the Bible says all things work together for good. Even the things that look as if they are not good, they are working together for your good. So be rest assured that the things that seem to be out of place are also working together for your good. Good. The pains of Joseph, the tears of Joseph, all those lonely nights of wandering and asking questions in confusion in Egypt, in Potiphar's house, in the prison. And it looked as if no one was giving Joseph the answer. As long as he was working properly, as long as he was working in order, as long as he kept on loving the Lord. It surely worked out. You know, he kept on loving the Lord. We saw how Joseph was actually you know, confronted with, with compromise. He said, how can I do this wickedness and sin against God? He was loving the Lord all through. The Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love God. So I, I am here encouraging you, even if you found yourself in a situation that look as if it's not working together for good. Hold on and keep loving the Lord. Do you know why? Because the word of God can never fail. The word of God forever stands. And if he has said it, it is surely coming to pass. So Joseph or Josephine, whoever you are, who have been working orderly and it look as if things are being delayed, be rest assured that not one word of God can ever fall to the ground. He says that those that diligently seek him will find him. He also said, like a father pitieth his children, that is the way God pities them that serve him you serve god he understands the weakness he hears those questions you ask him in the night and the tears that fall from your eyes and soaks your pillow in the night and you are waking up and wondering when will this change come i am telling you this monday morning that god is at work and suddenly you will see a change i'm so glad i serve a god who says i can restore years years Yes, that the canker worms, the palmer worms, the caterpillars have eaten. God said I would restore. And he is restoring in your life what the enemy has eaten up. We give him praise. We give him glory in the name of Jesus. This is Monday and we are here again to declare the counsel of God, the word of God, to pronounce the verdict of heaven over earth. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is the will of God which go forth to speak and to establish and to throw down structures of hell in the lives of people. If you move around physically, you will not see structures of the devil physically. You won't see altars of darkness physically raised with a tag. This is altar of darkness. They are spiritual and they are established over cities. And some of them are established over families. And you see them mostly expressed in the life of people. So throwing down structures is what we do over cities, over families, and over individual life. Any structure of hell still existing in your life, raised up by darkness, raised up by covenants of hell they are thrown down they are destroyed as we make declarations in the name of jesus stay tuned we are coming loaded this week as the lord has breathed upon us we are releasing every word he has said we are looking at the topic storing up treasures come on now 
storing up treasures that's what we are looking at we began to point at it on friday as the lord was giving us the direction said storing up treasures so throughout this week you're gonna be looking at it today will be more of an introduction i'm gonna be pointing out some things that through the week you're gonna be dissecting and i'm trusting the lord that you will know what it means to store up treasures and then store up treasures in the right place and be glad that you did we are trusting god that every wrong concept of storage that the devil have injected into the system of men especially the people of god it shall be disintegrated in the name of jesus now we enter into it is introduction today storing up treasures we want to start praise the name of jesus as we look at the scriptures wow we have so many scriptures today we are trusting the lord to give us speed to cover them as it is introduction I want to start reading from what Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 6. He himself is the one that gave us the suggestion, the idea, the clue, and the advice concerning this story now. I want to start reading it from Matthew chapter 6 from verse 19. The Bible says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. We are moth and rat dot corrupt and we are thieves break through and steal if you listen to this you will discover he did not say lay up lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth don't even lay up treasures at all he was mentioning a location a point like opening an account to put in money in this particular bank. Some people are withdrawing their money from the bank and trying to invest it here. Changing the places where they are storing up the treasures so that they want it to generate more. Now Jesus knows that men like storing up treasures. He said, do not store up. Lay it not up for yourself upon the earth. We are mud and rot that corrupt, and we are thieves break through and steal. That is very clear in what happens to the treasures we store on earth. We are seeing people made investments, they made investments in shares, in bonds, even in businesses. They have pumped in their life savings to it, and we see some of them collapse. We have seen some of them. We are how some fraudulent people entered and made the wreck of the company, and all that they stored in years have collapsed. You know, we have different several places and different places where people are storing up treasures. Some have studied the market, studied the, the, the movement of, of, of treasures and monies. And they are telling you, invest here and invest there. It's very interesting that Jesus also talked about it, knowing that men have this longing to acquire and also store up. Now, Jesus told us, as long as the earth is here, things can break into what you start. Moth, rust can creep into whatever, no matter where you store it, as long as it's under the sun, it can be crept into. Now, look at verse 20, the advice he gave us. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. So, we're looking at laying up treasures, storing up treasures. He said, lay it up, these treasures, in heaven. We're going to find out how we can lay these treasures in heaven. Every one of us can do that. He said, but lay up your treasures in heaven. We are neither mud or rust that corrupt. And we are thieves. Do not break through or steal. Now look at this concluding one. 
For where your treasure is, that is Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will your heart. You know your heart? Mm. That is where your heart will be. So this is Jesus' own advice to us. If you must store up treasure, he told us it is possible for someone to store treasures. You have gathered things physically on earth. How do you change it? You know, you have bank drafts that when you deposit huge amounts of money can be exchanged as a draft. And you can tender it as a legal tender. Jesus told us we can acquire physical things here on earth. And it can be stored up in heaven. How do you do that? We're going to find out this week. So that we don't just waste our resources. Waste up the things we have to do on earth. This is one of the major things the devil have used to wreck lives. People are pursuing to acquire and to store up because there seems to be a sense of security in what men have acquired, what men has gotten. But that is not where true riches is. Before I read where we have in the book of Luke chapter 12, I want to remind us what we mentioned on Friday regarding a man called Alexander the Great. I mentioned the moment of his death when he found that he's not going to survive that situation of sickness that was on him. He just knew that his time has come to die. He was only 32 years old. And suddenly it dawned on him that all the treasures he acquired, he conquered nations. He had military power. He had generals. He just discovered at that particular moment that all he has spent his life to gather amounts to nothing in the face of death. I wish the gospel was presented to him. At that time, Jesus had not come. There was about 320 years there about before Jesus was born physically. But the word of God was already there. And you can search. The Bible says those people that died before Christ came, they will be judged according to their conscience and the fear of God in their hearts. Hey! If that man only had found out how he can gather treasures and, and convert them, to become treasures in the afterlife. Oh, I wish. That man discovered that all he spent his life to gather and acquire only ends here. He was not able to transfer them to the life to come. And it was a regret to him. He had this simple message that he left for you and I. That are still living. Who also will soon pass away from this world. He told his generals as he gathered them, he said... I have three requests for you to do for me after I pass away. He told them, number one, he wants only his physicians to carry his coffin to the grave. Only the physicians. Of course, you know they were the best of the physicians of his day. He said he wants only them to carry him to the graveside. He said he wants them to carry them so that the whole world will know that in the point of death, no physician can save you. I hope that one is entering. Because some people think they can make money and whatever they think they can have. If you don't store up the real treasures, all you acquire at the face of death, you will realize that they are nothing. In the course of the week, we're going to look at the people whose time came to die. And they were exactly 
looking forward for what they have been able to store up for themselves in life to come. Men like Paul will say, oh yes, I know the time of my departure has come. I have fought a good fight. He said that it's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. These are men that we are able to convert the treasures they acquired in life and translated it into internal treasures that Jesus told us and said, stone up for yourself your treasures here on earth. There have been men that have learned how to transfer the treasures they have gotten from this life and it is awaiting them in glory and we are communicating throughout this week how you yourself can recognize treasures and how you can also convert it to become treasures in heaven and only you can be a witness to yourself with the Holy Ghost of the Lord in you bearing witness with you that you also have stored up treasures in heaven. You cannot do this unknowingly. You cannot do it. There was always a witness inside of you that confirms to you that you are storing up treasures in heaven. This man said, let my physicians carry me that the whole world should know that at the point of death, no medication, no discovery of the new and the latest healings and medical things that can save a man at the point of death. He said, number two, I want all my treasures, all my treasures to be poured on the way to the grave. Let it be poured on the ground. Let it be poured as they carry my grave. Let them know that all these treasures they are actually dust. Hey, the best that this man acquired, he was able to recognize that it is nothing. Nothing at the point of death. He said this one now. He said, I want you to make sure my hands are outside. Open. I wonder how they did that. The, 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 the coffin is usually, you know, made with a cover, a lid that covers the, 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 the coffin. I don't know, maybe they had to construct a coffin where the two hands had to be outside. Or maybe they put something that should rest the hand, but it is obviously seen outside. I don't know how they did that, but he made that demand and said, make sure my hands are hanging out empty so that the world will know. That I did not carry anything out. I came empty. I'm returning empty. It was a sorrowful death. It was a death full of regrets. For such a great man called Alexander the Great. You and I are hearing and singing today. And there are still people. Who pursue what they call treasures in life. At the expense of internal treasures. There are basic things we must get in life. There are things that are needed for life and living and godliness. While we acquire all these things, may we never forget that those that pursue things at the expense of internal treasures, they always die empty. They always die. They always die unfulfilled. Despite all they have put to acquire these things. And we are looking at this. Storing up treasures. Storing up treasures. I want to read. I think I have several scriptures here. In Luke chapter 12. I'm going to read. Verse 15 first. I'll read it in different translations. And then I'll complete it. Remember this is just the introduction. Even if we don't cover some things today. Tomorrow we're going to kick off. With the details of storing up treasures. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. I read the New Living Translation. It says, Beware. Don't be greedy for what you don't have. Real life is not measured by how much we own. Beware. Don't be greedy for what you don't have. And that is what we see, especially the younger men of our generation, craving by everything and by every means.
means to acquire what they don't have is the spirit of mammon it is the god of this world that is making i see our youth doing everything for them to just acquire i'm praying god to deliver this generation from this corruption it is the spirit of mammon oh my god i cry out that this great destiny is to realize that all of these things that you men acquire cannot satisfy this man got all he got yet he discovered there's nothing the truth is that all these things are nothing but there are things you can get and you can transform or actually translate as i said the way you can take physical money from the bank and you exchange it for a draft that is equivalent to that money it is valuable you can translate what you have that are treasures here and store it for yourself in eternity it was jesus that was talking throughout this week we are trusting god we're gonna find out how how you can store up treasures for yourself i am saying this because there are so many people of god who are not recognizing that there are treasures they can store up and they are allowing these treasures to waste they are allowing these treasures to fizzle out they are allowing these treasures to go every single day the bible says take heed that no one take your crown crowns can be taken if you don't take it my desire my earnest plea and my cry is that you will recognize how to store treasures for yourself so that the devil don't steal from you remember he is a thief the bible says that he is a thief he goes here and there to and fro looking for whom to devour looking for whom to steal he anytime he's coming the bible told us in the book of john chapter 10 verse 10 anytime he comes he's coming to steal he is coming to steal he is coming to destroy i pray for you from today henceforth the devil will not steal from you anymore the devil will not steal from you anymore and whatever he has stolen the bible says when a thief is caught he shall restore back sevenfold whatever time whatever devotion whatever treasures the enemy has stolen from you where you have wasted treasures i am praying that you're gonna recover as this year is coming to an end you're gonna discover how the enemy have been stealing from you so that you pull yourself together and say devil in the name of jesus i have discovered how you have been stealing from me i'm supposed to live well on earth and also lay up treasures for eternity and i am no longer going to permit for you to keep on stealing from me i rebuke every stealing of the devil in your life in whatever way he has been stealing from you i ask the lord to open your eyes to recognize it and for you to stand upon your feet and say no no more in the name of jesus jesus told us clearly a man's life does not consist on the abundance of what he possess what do you think you possess and what is it that is giving you a false confidence i pray god to take it away that you may see the real confidence i've had about billionaires in dollars made all the money but they are still feeling empty they may try to be philanthropists yet they are not satisfied <laughs> it is not being a philanthropist that is storing up treasures in heaven i want you to know that throughout this week i'm gonna write it out point it out and spell it out in their true colors there have been philanthropists that are empty some of them have put gone and blew away their own head because they have discovered that all the accumulation of these things does not satisfy. Don't miss any day this week as we explore. As we explore, our time is almost up. I just want to read this scripture and then we pray. Trust in the Lord. The Bible told us in the message Bible, speaking to the people in Luke chapter 12 verse 15. Speaking to the people, Jesus said, Take care, protect yourself against the least bit of greed. Greed. Life is not defined by what you have. Even when you have a lot. Hey, life is not defined. The message Bible put it this way. Life is not defined by what you have. Even when you have a lot. I believe that this message is really required to sound all into the mind of every man. 
in this generation. There is a spirit released from the pit of hell that is possessing men. And I see Christians also affected by this. Where they do all to acquire, to display, to show they have also gotten and they are not behind. May the Lord help us throughout this day. As we look into the details of these treasures we are talking about. I want to pray for somebody. I didn't read all the scriptures. Oh my God. We'll continue tomorrow. <laughs> I'm trusting the Lord to dissect. Bring out in details. And you see them and put them in their rightful order. And you enjoy your life here on earth. The devil. Not. 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 As in. As if he's not existing. You find out these things and put them in their rightful places and go forth to enjoy your life here. Recognize what true values are and store up for yourself treasures in heaven. Can we pray together? I'm going to pray the Lord to help you recognize what true treasures are. Trust in the Lord to eliminate things that make you to see things wrongly. You can be delivered from the cravings of trying to make impression. There are people who are perpetually under the, under the pressure of expressing something. They just want to also let people know that they have also acquired. It's not needed. It's not necessary. I'm going to trust God as we pray right now. You're going to commit yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, help me and deliver me from this pressure. Yes. Pressures of life. Yes. Peer pressure, family pressure, not meeting up, and you feel that you are behind, and you're now trying to see all you can. And especially at the ending of this year, when the year is coming to an end, and you feel another day is ending, another year has been added to my life, and what am I doing? And you seem as if you are coming under pressure. I pray the peace of God. I come against every falsehood that the enemy is putting before you. I declare they are shattered by fire. Child of God, receive the peace of God. The economy notwithstanding. The situation you are having right now notwithstanding. Your financial status notwithstanding. The condition of your family notwithstanding. I speak the peace of God unto you in the name of Jesus we declare the chains of lies of the devil is broken over your life right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah go ahead and bless the name of the Lord it's a new day go into your day excited go into your day and fulfill your day we come against every spell enchantment demonic release it we come against them today in the name of Jesus we plead the blood of Jesus into the day as you go into your day today is blessed we are not permitting the activities of hell any man any woman there is an agent of darkness some of them have shops some of them are in the offices I declare right now in the name of Jesus the assignment given to you by devil all your wicked devices all your jealousy against the people of God that are progressing I release judgment upon you you will not be able to afflict any of anyone anyone that that you have planned to bring down I declare it will not work right now in the name of Jesus the people are preserved and covered go into your day walk and be blessed God said I will bless the work of your hands whatever you do for a living that is genuine that is legal the blessing of the Lord is released upon it to flourish and to do well in the name of Jesus till I come your way tomorrow by the grace of God keep on trusting God and doing your best in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.